Well, the Tribeca Film Festival is in full swing, and one of the most interesting films showing is Bear. Mm. It's a story about growing up and growing wild in the Nevada desert. Take a look. Sarah. I'm Pepper. Nice to meet you. Oh, wow. That's really good. Oh, my God. Oh, no. I was just being, that was me being. No, but that's like a painting, and then you pay, you continued the painting, and now it's a bigger painting. That's some Van Gogh That's really good. Thank you. Yeah. You want a drink? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm OK. Mm -hmm. Scared to have the cooties. Huh. <laughs> cooties. <I'm scared. laughs> Joining us now to talk about Bear and Cooties is filmmaking duo Natalia Lette and Alexandra Roxo. Ooh, Ladies. Love those names. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Okay, so Bear, that's a very provocative title. Mm -hmm. Tell yeah, us more. It, it's interesting. <laughs> People have think nudity is more provocative, provocative than violence, but for mm -hmm. us it's just, you know. It's a part of the story and a part of the character's transformation is just like letting go of layers of herself. And some of that is physically taking her clothes off and also just um, uh, you know, taking off layers of who she is. And mm -hmm. it's about two women who go on a very wildly different journey and come together. Tell us more about the plot line and what brought each of you to this project. So I wrote the script and um, had written it before I met Alexandra. We started working together about two years ago. Um, shared it with her. We had done a number of different projects. We did a web show. We did um, some pieces for Vice, uh, Vice Media, some documentaries, and she really loved the script. And we decided to bring it to life. So we shot it last year. Mm -hmm. And so, is it at all autobiographical? Where did the story come from? So it's not autobiographical, but it's inspired by true events and mm -hmm. um, relationships in my life. So sort of drawing from moments in my life where I was maybe in a similar place as the lead character and adapting that into a fiction. Okay. And you talked about, you mentioned Vice in your work with Vice, and I want to make sure I got the title correct. You, were in a, you shot a documentary called Every Woman, Life as a Truck Stop Stripper. Ooh. Natalia, <laughs> talk to us about that life as a truck stop stripper. Well, we came across this club in New Mexico right. in a small town called Moriarty, New Mexico. And we, because we were scouting locations for the feature, and we thought it was such an unusual location uh, because it specifically caters to truck drivers. And some of the women live in the property, and it's just such an unusual place, like no other strip club that we've seen portrayed. And from that, from you know, getting to know those, some of those women and the people that live there, we had this other idea to investigate what it would be like to live and work in that scenario. So we decided to do a separate documentary piece where we both worked there and filmed each other. Alexandra, what was that experience like? Yeah. <laughs> well, for us as filmmakers, we feel like it's really important to be really authentic, right? Mm -hmm. Not just be two New Yorkers who are showing up um, into this small town and, and acting like we know exactly what it's like to be there. So for us, going and living there and really feeling it, we felt like we really were able to hone in on the essence of what it would be like to actually live in this place. We got to know the locals and actually ended up casting a few of the girls that appear in the documentary we made for Vice. They are actually in the feature. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're people that we build relationships with and that are still you know, in our lives. Mm. That was important. I mean, the experience was really difficult for us, but looking back, it was, it was really amazing to be able to bring that knowledge to bear. Um, I was going to ask you, how did stripping impact you as women and as filmmakers? I don't know if it impacted us as women specifically, but definitely um, in term, it helps the story a lot, and it helps us, um, you know, we're trying to do stories about authentic human relationships, and for us to be able to tell that story, we felt it was important to go in there and see what it's like and um, and just you know, you get a better understanding of what the dynamics are between the truckers and the women who work there and the club page, you know, owner and, um, and how it's much more complex than what we've seen in some other films that are usually told from a male perspective as well. Yeah, and your main character, Embera, goes to one of those truck stops and becomes a stripper also and is played by Glee star Diana Agron. Yeah. Now, this character is far different from her high school character <laughs> in Lima, Ohio. So how did you know that she would have the ability to be that raw and go there with this character? I think, you know, Diana is such an ins incredibly talented actress, and mm -hmm. I had spoken to her a few times. We'd both talked to her about the role, and 
she just, she's so smart. She had so much to contribute creatively to the story too and to her character and she was just willing to go there. She's, you know, was ready to take that next step in her career. She really went there. This was her first nude scene. Yeah, she yeah. was super fearless. She d never complained once and she was in all kinds of situations that were probably new for her or very different in terms of an acting perspective. Mm -hmm. Wow, so you guys are busy women. You're doing this movie, you have other projects from the web series you're working on under your company, Purple Milk. Tell us a little bit more about how you guys met and why you knew or how you knew you'd be perfect business partners. <laughs> uh, well, we met a few years ago. We've both been filmmakers and photographers and storytellers for a while. That's our priority, that's what we do. And we decided to team up and on a first documentary we did in Cuba that we ended up selling to Vice. That was our first project with them. And then the relationship organically kept growing and we found that there was some sort of a magical click that happened that we were able to keep making work. And now in the past three years, we've, I mean, made hundreds of minutes of content together and really from the ground up, us, self-producing. So what's well, next? <laughs> Well, we have a few scripts in development that we're writing. We're also coming out with the second season of our web show, Be Here Now Wish, and that one's a comedy, and it's not dark or anything. It's... You guys like to have fun, too. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. like to have fun. We're acting in that as well, so that'll be coming out in a couple months. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right, so who has more fun, redheads or ravens? <laughs> it depends what kind of fun. Oh, now you're talking. All right, well, continue having fun and putting out great content. Thank you both for being here. Yeah, thanks Good for luck having at Tribeca us. Film Festival as well. Yeah. Thank you. All right, and we'll be right back with more Rise Entertainment 360.